Hello, this is Angela Anderson. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw some nautical sea life. We'll be doing a seahorse, a starfish, some coral, and a spiral seashell. In my second video, I show you how to step-by-step -step paint in your sea creatures using acrylic paints in dark blue, aqua, and white. So be sure to check that out after this video. Okay, so let's start out by drawing our seahorse. I drew a circle for the cheek area and then about halfway down the circle I drew a rounded kind of triangle coming off the bottom then a straight line from there and an angled snout then connect those two lines now I'm just kind of darkening up that those two kind of lumps for the top of the head and giving him a little horn there the eye goes right in the middle, right up next to that first circle that we did. Then from the back of that kind of horn shape, it's right at the back end of that circle, the first circle. We're going to start there and curve down, curve out and straight down for the body, for the back. Then the neck is just a curved line and then the belly is rounded out the opposite way. So come down just below halfway for the bottom of the belly. Then it kind of curves in, the back line curves in towards the belly there. And then the tail comes down, curves out just a little bit. It's about the same length as the body. And it will curve up and curl nice big circular shape right there. So come out past the belly, do a nice big curve all the way up. Then I'm going to connect that tail, kind of come down with a parallel line and go on the inside of that curve. Continue your circle around and then connect it to the tail and curve it in on itself. So you're going to have a spiral all the way in like that. And just make sure that the tail narrows as it gets down toward the body. So I decided to kind of uh, clean up that bottom line there. It was getting a little too thick. Just use light pressure on your pencil so that you can erase it easily if you make any corrections. At the base of the tail, where it meets the back, there's a fin. And just draw like a fan shape. Kind of angle up, curve it around, and then angle back in toward the body. There's a few little lines in it. And then the back will get a few little lumps. Just kind of evenly space these. So you're going to be doing some lines later that will connect up to those. Now I'm just darkening up my lines now that I like where I am have all, all of it placed. The pupil is just kind of a straight slit. Now for kind of the decorations inside his body you're going to do a line kind of mimicking that backbone line and then another line mimicking the curve of the belly. And then those are going to have cross pieces come across, so make kind of a plaid. As you get to the tail, you'll continue those lines straight across and just follow that across. You want to make T shapes from the edge of the tail in. So just make sure those lines stay straight. Then everywhere that those lines meet the outside of the body, that outside edge, you're going to put a little lump where he has these little spines sticking out. I'm not sure what those are called, but he's got little lumps there. So just draw those in if you want and do them on the body as well, on his belly. And then everywhere that the lines 
crisscross and meet in the in the middle of his body there's also a V shape that'll just help it look like those are kind of sticking out a little bit as well just a tiny little V shape and that middle line from the back goes all the way down into the tail as well then there's some lines there I just darkened up that tail fin just a little bit to give it a little detail you don't have to do that part because unless you're going to use this drawing for um, its own decoration this is just kind of extra details at this point I use this to trace on my painting so that's our seahorse now for the starfish I'm going to start with the circle and do lines radiating out from it like a spoke pattern I did five lines straight out kind of equally spaced this just kind of gives me a basis for his kind of spine then on the inside of those lines I did a curved line for the little webbing where the legs meet the body it's kind of curved and then I did V shapes coming out from that curving they'll be narrow at the tip and wider where they meet the body so narrow them as they go out toward the edge and I just kind of went on the outside of those lines just use them as a guide try to keep them about the same length and then you can kind of correct your curve there as you want to if you need to have more of a curve I decided I wanted my starfish to have a little bit more of a kind of a webbing right there so I widened that section a little bit and you can go back in and erase your lines that you don't want now I've got my shape drawn in the way I like it I just went back in with my pencil and darkened up those outside edges to kind of finalize my drawing then wherever those those initial uh, five lines are I went and did little circles a large circle in the middle and then getting smaller toward the tip and I just followed those lines all the way down and along the edges of the starfish did some little wiggly lines just to indicate maybe some of his um, little tentacles or whatever are um, our little suckers are peeking out and then with the pencil lightly I did more circles on the inside all the way around the body large in the middle and then getting smaller as it goes toward the tip and that's about it for the starfish pretty easy for the coral it's kind of going to look like a tree so we're going to start out by doing like a trunk at the bottom there wider at the bottom then narrowing the arms are very fluid so it's it's more um, fluid than a, a tree would be maybe more angular um, this is, you're going to keep your lines very smooth and flowy so think of water s shapes that kind of thing um, just fit in as many lines as you can there I think I fit in six main stems and then from there you can start adding branches off of those and just continue that curved flowy line fill in your empty spaces with these curved lines the tips are rounded on coral so instead of going to a point like you would on a tree branch they come to a rounded kind of nub that'll make it look a little bit more coral like and then there's little tinier branches coming off of it as well in plot places when you're adding your branches you're going to be making Y shapes out from that main stem so just make sure that all of your extra little smaller branches are pointing up towards the tip of that whatever branch that they're coming off of 
That way they'll look a little bit more natural. Just make sure you're making those Y shapes at the junctions and you won't have any problems. I filled in my drawing, but you don't have to do that. When you're tracing it, you really only need the outline main line. Um, I was just kind of working out my shapes, so I drew it all in. And just continuing to fill in. If you get one that's too thick, you can erase it. So the main thing with the coral is just to keep it very fluid looking. Um, that way it won't look like a tree. You're kind of wanting to, you know, make it look like coral is has got all these sm smooth flowy lines with the rounded tips. And that's about it to the coral. It's pretty easy. Then for the seashell, I started out with a cone shape. The bottom here, I curved it in on either side and then made like a little tail. Out from the bottom of that tail on the one side, I'm going to do a curved line coming out and then up and back in toward the shell. Then I'm going to cut off and do a diagonal line back toward the tail and kind of cut off that whole section of the cone and erase it. Now I'm going to stack some diagonal lines up from that point. So I'm going to go up and then diagonally back and create a section there. Then above that, I'm going to kind of round out the edges there. Above that, I'm going to do another diagonal section across and coming outside of the edges of the cone just a little bit. And then another one. Now that one was too tall, so I decided to erase it. This should get narrower as they get toward the top. So the, the first one's very large and then they'll get smaller as they get toward the top. Narrow and less tall. So another one. I'm just using that outline of that cone to kind of give me my main shape, but making sure that all of those lines are at the same angle of diagonal. Smaller and smaller as you get toward the tip. It's actually pretty fun. So once you get your spiral shape in the way you like it, then you can start kind of adding some decorative elements. And I added some vertical lines. This shell has long lines going all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom of it. So start one here kind of t close to the edge and do it the same curve as the outside edge of the shell. So wherever it curves in, you're going to curve it in. I've darkened up the outside edge so it made it easier to see, but each one of those lines cur follows the curve of the shell. And then I did a scalloped edge for the mouth and a second line to make a little lip. Darkened it up, but that is going to be like a little lip right there. Two parallel lines then the opening has got some little lines coming down in toward it. Then do a ruffled wavy line all the way along that outside edge there to finish it off. Then I'm adding a few more lines. This time they're going to go cross following the diagonal and then I'm adding in some more of my vertical lines as well. So go cross and then down. There'll be about five, four or five long lines, darken up the opening, and these major lines here I just darkened up with a little extra color, added a little bit more of a tip at the very top, and it's done. Hope you've enjoyed this project today. Please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out part two where I paint this in with acrylic paints. And share this with your artsy friends. If you know somebody that likes to draw, please share it with them. And that really helps me out a lot. If you try this out, you can share it with me on my Thankful Art page on Facebook. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching. Bye.